Well, today, we're gonna take a peek at another bidet seat. This is Bio Bidet's BB550, which I will say is a sibling to the BB500. Essentially, they look identical. The BB550 just has the drying cycle built in versus the BB500 that does not. So if you're looking at one or the other, everything here is gonna be exactly the same as the BB500, but with the drying capability built in. So we will demonstrate that as well today. We're gonna to do a full install on this, but first we gotta get it out of the box. So, you know what that means? It's unboxing time. Okay, so we got the box here in front of me. Like I said, this is the BB550, which has the dryer built in, the BB500, same exact toilet seat, just without the drying capability. Um, so if you're looking at either of those, so cut the tape on both sides of this box. Now I have done, now I think this is gonna be my fourth uh, bidet seat video. Um, and I actually thoroughly enjoy doing these videos. Uh, after the first one, um, which came basically as part of the pandemic, I have absolutely loved bidet seats. And so today, we're gonna mainly look at how this all goes on and see if there's anything different between this model and some of the other uh, Bemis models I have done before as well. Okay, so one thing out of the gate is comparing this model to some of the other bidet seats I've done. This is very, very slim. They have definitely worked on getting this as slim as the slimmest profile yet. Um, I love to see that because the worst part about my BB2000 is how big the back end is. It's huge. I still love that bidet seat. That's the very first bidet seat I, I, I purchased um, during the pandemic. And I'm still, I'm not sad I did that, but um, I will say that right out of the gate, much slimmer, much more close profile to a traditional seat. Um, the other thing is I have had a few different, a couple different companies other than, you know, another one other than Bemis. I do like to see this where you just have a standard plug so it's easier to, um, to route it if you need to, uh, to where it's gonna go. It's not gonna unplug from the seat on this side. It's gonna be uh, sealed all the way to the end. Uh, and then you just wanna make sure you plug this into a protected uh, outlet. So uh, that is something to bring up. Okay, outside of the seat itself, in here we should have the manual. Let's get this guy out of the bag. And it looks like review and win. All right, uh, let's see. We have the standard template that you get here. And so the nice thing about this is you can lay this on your seat to line it up so that you know where the mechanism is gonna be mounted. So this is handy to have. If you so choose, um, I'll probably use it, we'll see. But uh, that does come with it just to make e uh, easier installation. And then we actually have the user manual itself. Goes through everything with the seat. And then there is a literally um, a nice, uh, what do you call it? So it's, it's laminated. Uh, and it does have the uh, different cycles here now with this specific one. Now, obviously, at this price point, um, this the the non-heated version, the BB500, uh, retails at 219. This retails at 269. Although you can pretty much find this about either of them to be honest, about 200 bucks, 199. This is not gonna have a remote for it, right? We're not gonna have a, a nice remote that you're gonna put on the wall or anything like that. It's literally gonna be quick and easy controlled here on the side. So it's gonna be something that's a little bit different because every seat that I've done so far actually has a remote, the one that I've actually used. But this at least tells you how to operate as well. So this uh, laminated sheet's all there for you. It even shows you how to in, uh, remove the seat real easily as well. So that's that. In the installation packet, if I open this guy up, it's gonna be similar to basically any of these seats that, you've, that you may or may not have, I guess, looked at. Um, you have this piece here. This is actually the piece that uh, the, slide, the toilet slides into and holds into place. Um, so this piece goes on. These pieces are the pieces that actually hold this onto the toilet itself. So that's what those are. This is the manifold or um, 
adapter to put on your tank. So right now you have a water line that's going from the spigot on the wall up to the bottom of the tank. You take that off the tank, you put this on, and then that water line comes into this. And then this basically is just a T-tap off of that water line to, to go to the actual seat itself. And the nice thing about uh, BioBidet um, or Bemis seats, they actually have a separate water line that's not pre-attached to the seat. The thing I like about that is that if something was to happen um, to this water line, it is actually a separate water line altogether that you can replace. Uh, another seat that I've done had it permanently mounted to the toilet and you had this water line. Now, low probability that something's going to happen there, but uh, it is possible. So it does have a nice rubber seal in there as well on both sides and just some plastic pieces there to hold on to that. There we go. So essentially we have everything out of the seat. Um, if you want to take a peek at the seat itself before we install it, it is a soft closed lid, so that's always nice. Um, but let me uh, show you down here with the guts. Okay, so down here we have the where the water mechanism comes out as well as the drying mechanism here. So the dryer is just a, a vent and this little flap flips up. Water mechanism, we do have two on this one. So we have one that goes for the front wash and one that does to, for the rear wash. That would be my guess. Uh, that or front wash versus, uh, or uh, Hard spray versus uh, wider spray. We're gonna find that out uh, once we get it installed. I'll put a piece of plastic over the seat so we can actually take a peek at how, at how this works. So without further ado, let's get into the bathroom. Let's get this mounted up and actually see what this looks like on a toilet. Okay, welcome to my bathroom. Of course it's a bathroom, so there's gonna be hard surfaces. It's gonna get echoey a little bit, but it is what it is. So I have the toilet already stripped of its seat. Um, depending on the seat you have, you may you probably just have two screws back here that you have. To, you may have a screwdriver that you need to use to take those out. Uh, but once you get that out, then I cleaned the seat up a little bit, made it a little bit nicer. This toilet needs a little cleaning because it. This is my basement toilet. It doesn't use regularly, but that's it. Um, it does get used every week. I'm gonna look at two and two things. So first of all, I have this piece here. This is the mounting piece for the toilet. The toilet slides in. If you look, there's a spot. This is open on this side. It's closed on this side. So that's gonna be the back. Um, looks like there's arrows here to show you which way to slide it in. That's gonna go on there like so. That, um, we do have in that kit, these two rubber pieces here. These are actually rubber, rubber nuts, so when they go in, um, and you tighten this up, it squeezes it and actually fills that hole. So you can take these and just pop them down into um, the toilet. I'm gonna get this out of the way for a second. Um, put this down in the hole. Sometimes what happens, it's easier to get the bolt started on the nut and then use that to push it through like that. And then take the bolt back out and then do this on this one. Just start it on the threads. Nice and tight and all the way down. Come on, there we go. All right, now I have those two in place. Um, now I'm gonna take this guy, set it there. There are two bolts, one for each side. And then these guys here, um, there's a, it's kind of a metal slotted washer with a plastic backing and that's gonna be metal side up and it's gonna just slide into this rail like so, if you can see that. So you can see there's those two. These are gonna sit on here for now. And then these just slide in. There's actually teeth in here, the grittiness between this. And so once this sets, it shouldn't slide around too much. Um, so I can set that down in there. And I'm not gonna tighten anything down yet. I'm just gonna get it uh, in place so it's not gonna go anywhere. And then from here, once you get that to the point where you can kind of maneuver around a little bit. I might loosen that upside over here. That is when you can use this guide to undo. And we can figure out where we need this to be. So you can line it up. I can show this a little wider. If I can line this up with the toilet, get it to where I want it. Looks like I'm going to bring it forward. Now this is just an estimate for now. 
that's fairly close I think for now um, I'm not I'll stick with that for now and I'll just uh, center it to the left and right and then I can actually tighten this down and then after I get this set then we're gonna work on the water and you can do this in either order the water first followed by this or this followed by the water but the seats obviously not going to go on until we get the water in place now these rubber gaskets take a minute there there's a lot of rubber to pull up and it's just squeezing that hole full of and using that hole to basically squeeze that rubber up into it to keep it from going anywhere let me get this tightened up and then we'll uh, work on the, the water hoses this is always the harder stuff to show on video because it's up in this at least in my bathroom it's against the wall but this is the water line right here that I pulled off the bottom of the toilet right here so you can see this piece here ah, is going to go attached to the bottom of the toilet and then this water line is going to get attached to the bottom of this like so and then you're going to want to face this forward for the seat to connect to that water spigot and then we can turn the water back on now that is one thing i did want to say is when you go to take uh, on do that from the bottom of the toilet turn the water off and then you can just take it off you get a little, little bit of water on the floor if you have a bucket or just a towel put that down that way you don't get uh, water all over the place so let me get that in place quick and then i'll show you what it looks like so you can see here i have my t that i just put in facing forward right now i do have these snug so i did use a, a, a wrench real quick to tighten the water line back into this guy and then this guy onto the toilet no matter what you do I've, I've had leaks from the actual toilet itself once that moves a little bit. So once we get everything, don't worry too much if you have a little bit of a leak at first. It just shows you where you may have to tighten some fittings. But I do have those fairly tight. And then that's where the seat's going to go as soon as we get the seat in place. Now, of course, to move forward, we have to actually have the seat in place. And since we did this part first, we are essentially ready to go for this guy to go into place. So it's going to just sit down, um, it should go into place and you should feel it slide in. And that is there. So right now, looking at how I have this, uh, where you can see a little bit of the inner ring, I'm going to want the seat to move back. So that's what I'm going to do first. Um, there's a button right back here, push that in and it'll unlatch, it'll unlatch it. That's the button right there, you can kind of see it built in there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit slide it back uh, may have to loosen a little more slide it back as far as I think it needs to go and then uh, square it up again and then tighten it back down I will say this underneath this bracket there's a piece of rubber that keeps it from moving I do like that that's definitely one that has moved the least out of everyone that I've ever done all right let's say, try this again line it up back to click and I could actually bring it forward just a little bit more no that's actually pretty good I'm gonna keep it right there that is actually really good there's a little bit of a lip here but I'd rather have the lip here than here so that's pretty good all right now let's get the water line hooked up on the on the side so there is a 90 degree elbow on one side and then a straight in on the other uh, this 90 degree I put on the toilet seat so it's not sticking out from the toilet like that um, it's gonna go down so I'm gonna go ahead and start it on that first and these are plastic threads on the seat itself so just make sure you're not cross threading and just hang tight it for now and then this guy we're gonna want to connect to our and we have to bend that a little bit okay now I'm gonna use my wrench now even on this one we don't have to get crazy tight there are rubber gaskets in there but uh, we are ready to turn the water on so let me show you what it looks like so you can see we have the 90 out of here this is a little bit stiffer than I like but this it's not a stainless steel hose it doesn't have as much bendiness to it but it is gonna be out of the way you're not gonna feel that or anything and right into the elbow so or the, the T sorry all right, let's kick on the water. See if we have any leaks anywhere. And we do, right above. So I have a leak right there. I just tightened it just a little bit more. 
because it is a 90 so you don't you have to just make sure that it, it gets uh, tight enough I'm not seeing any additional leaking I'm just gonna clean up the waters back here and then we can check all right I'm just gonna let the uh, tank fill up I did empty this for the most part um, it had very little water in it so I'm gonna let that fill and then we'll uh, we'll double check it okay the last step is power so I have that tank seems like it's not leaking anymore um, I don't feel any additional water. I'll continue to check that. And I always like to check that for at least for the first day. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And she makes a nice beep. Now, just a second ago, I went and installed some uh, some plastic uh, saran wrap. I'm going to get this camera set up better. And then we're going to try the front, front and rear washers out. Okay, so before we get into wash cycles, let's talk about the other setting. And that is the heated seat and heated water. So this does have a water and a heated drying, to be honest. Um, so you can set the, the temperature of the seat, but also the temperature of the water and the drying capability. And over here, uh, there we go. This is the button that's on the left. If you're sitting on the seat, the left side. So to your left, you'll have water drying temp uh, setting as well as seat temperature. And we will have off, low, or high. And so off, there's no LED light on. Low is just a standard LED light. High, it's a brighter LED light. And I'll show you that here in a second. But we can go between that, and it does beep as well. The one towards the front of the seat is the water uh, dryer temp. That long beep, that means it's off. So low, high, off. So I'm gonna set it to low. And then seat uh, is exact same thing, just the rear button. So there's off low high off yep and i'll put that to low as well so the heated seat is on low as well now it does have a sensor pull this out sensor on the seat so that it knows so right now if i was to click wash i don't know if it'll do anything other than get ready Yep, so it can't do anything because there's nobody sitting on the seat. So if I put my hand on here, and maybe before we do it, let's talk about this back here, the actual knob. Let's get up here. So this knob back here, I can push it towards the back or push it towards the front. And you can think of it exactly like that. If I push this knob towards the back, it's a rear wash. If I turn it towards the front, it's a front wash and so there are front wash here as you can see here and we have rear wash now there are different modes turbo wash pulse wash and standard wash as well all right so turbo wash is once you have the position of this in the rear or, or uh, front setting you get it onto your setting that you want and then there's a button in the middle so that little middle button you push that once, it starts a turbo wash, and it'll increase the pressure. If we push it a second time, it goes from turbo to pulse. And then we have standard, press the control knob a third time during a wash to switch back to the standard wash. So you can kind of think of it as the low, medium, high, we just are cycling through things. Right, starts in standard, one push goes to turbo, second push goes to pulse. And uh, other than that, I believe, and the self-cleaning should happen every single time you you start the wash cycle. Uh, or I don't know if, it, when you sit on the seat maybe? Nope, just when you start the wash cycle, it does a, a cleaning, cleansing wash to clean the, the nozzles off. And then, uh, yeah. So while seated and not using a wash function, press the control knob button once to activate the dryer. So if I hit the dry this, actually it probably won't do anything if I'm not sitting on the seat again. So let's, Pretend I'm sitting on the seat, but let's get this out back. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna go put. I'm gonna put my hand on the seat. I'm just gonna push the button in to start the dryer. And there she goes. She is drying. If I push it again, it stops the drying mode. So dryer on, dryer off. Okay. Now wash cycle. I have my hand on here, so it feels. Or, you know, it's like I'm sitting on the seat. I'm gonna go into a rear wash cycle. Push it back. And then it should spit out here once it does its cleaning cycle. Make sure that this is going to catch it. There it goes. Now let's try the turbo wash. Increase the pressure. If I hit it again, oscillating. So it's just going back and forth very little. It doesn't 
Oh, there it goes down in pressure and then back up. Okay. And then I'll click it again, go back to a standard wash, and I'll bring it back to zero to turn off that wash. So I don't know how well you heard me. However, let's do a front wash. Let's see what that looks like. Front wash. So you can see exactly where that sucker was hitting. And I think we have the same thing. And then oscillating. Or what do they call it? They call it pulsating, I'm sorry. And then standard, and then I can turn it off. Pretty simple in its operation, all without a remote control. And of course you still have the interaction on the seat itself, so you have to be sitting for this to actually go off. It will clean itself, but it won't actually do anything without somebody sitting, or at least something occupying the seat to act like uh, well, somebody sitting on it. So that is the full install. This is the BB550. Exact same toilet seat, but with drying as the BB500. So if you wanted to go down drying, if you don't really want that, that's fine, you can do the BB500. However, I would tell you for the price, because essentially right now, you can get either one for the exact same cost, do the drying. It's not something that you I, you, you have to have, it isn't. Uh, you can always pat yourself dry with, with toilet paper and you'll always get yourself cleaner if you dry yourself off with toilet paper anyway, just in case you miss something. But in the end, I do prefer drying. And if you get used to and, and really understand how to operate this these, uh, these bidet seats, they clean really well. You know, you don't, if you got peanut butter on your hand, you're not just gonna wipe it off with a paper towel. You're gonna wash it off because you're not gonna get it all. It's just never gonna always come off unless you wash it off. And bidet seats are that for your bottom. It is, there is no way I'm going back. Every single toilet that I will have here forward will either have a bidet seat or a full bidet toilet. <laughs> without question, no doubt. And I do prefer the powered versions like these because I like the heated seat, I like the heated dry, I like the heated water, because really cold water, uh, I've used the bidet seat without the heated water turned on. It is uncomfortable in the winter time. And so that is really nice. I usually keep everything just really low. Uh, we, like, we don't always have the heated seat on typically, um, but the heated water and the heated dry is, worth its weight so that's what i'll tell you at 200 bucks this is quite a fantastic seat um, and i'm really looking forward to using it and i will have a full review of it as well so this is staying installed here right in my uh, my bathroom and uh yeah if you want to come back to my tech goose channel to see the full review i will put a link in this description once that is done so thank you for watching to the end of this video for this full setup on the bb550 same as the 500 but uh if you're interested, come on back. Check out my other videos on the other bidet seats if you want to see the differences between them. Um, I'll put some links in the description below for that. So thanks for watching to the end of this video. We'll catch you back here on GeekSmart for another future video install setup tutorial. We'll see you soon.